Hello my Nakamataji, for the last time this year, this is Joy News here to give you a live update on the current events at Onigashima. We have swords, we have lore, but most of all we have a good looking man who proves us all wrong about Oda's artistic style. All of this and more in this week's Joy News. But first up, let's go to our on-site reporter. So I'm on my way to Toto Land where the Germa Double Six are escaping Whole Cake Island. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but we'll bring you more when we arrive on scene. Back to you. Thanks for the report. What adventures will the Vin Smokes be up to, and what new reveals will we find? With all the focus on Sanji and Germa modifications, and the hints we've gotten about Mads recently during the Onigishima raid, this is certainly a timely cover story to receive, as many have been waiting to see the continued story of the Vin Smokes and how they will affect the rest of the series. There's also the question of whether this cover story will exclusively follow the Vin Smoke family, or whether they will also come across others who stayed behind to assist in holding off Big Mom's crew. But for now, let's go to weather. I see. More black lightning. High chances of balloon men falling. <laughs> also, I'm Chang out for Onigashime's next top model. Make sure to vote for me! Oh, what the hell, it's the last week of joy news for the year. Just go to the traffic reporter. There's really a lot of flames and smoke, so it's not really easy to see everything going on, but for the most part, the action seems to have died down on the left side, but there's still a lot of movement on the right. Are you okay? Come in. Are you okay? Can you hear us? Whoa! Yes, yes, I am still here. It appears we've been hit by a floating queen. It seems that he may be headed off the island, but who knows where he will end up. Back to you. Sources confirm that that was indeed Queen who has been hurtled off the island with the conclusion of the fight between Sanji and the funky beast pirate's commander. It seems that the impact of the Straw Hat chef's Ifrit Jambe we saw last chapter was enough to send Queen flying off the island, and this has been confirmed in writing that Sanji is the victor, bringing this one-on-one -on -one to an end. A fitting end to a magnificent battle. That being said, it has also rendered Sanji himself unconscious and with all the chaos on the island, it is a matter of what will now happen to Sanji. It'll be interesting if upon waking up, Oda will play with the idea of Sanji's dark side as despite his victory, his eyebrow which switched directions during the awakening of his dormant German modifications remains unchanged. So what will remain of the pact with Zoro? Will this be relevant at all? It seems we'll have to wait to find out. For now, we bring you a snippet of a popular reality TV show which has gone viral after the reveal of what was behind King's Mask. gonna win. It seems no one ever had a chance to stand up to King. Wow, what a magnificently designed character. What beauty, what grace. We see now why the Lunarians were called gods in ancient times. King really looks quite angelic. And what a surprise from Oda. Having built up a reputation of a goofy, so-called unconventional drawing style, this one design in King can put all such comments to rest. The mangaka has proven once and for all that he is capable of drawing aesthetically superior characters to rival any manga series. And what a way to throw a curveball, especially after the hilarious route he had taken with King's dinosaur abilities, suggesting that he may use King for comedic purposes too. Who would have thought that such a demonic looking character is hiding such an angelic face inside? In fact, 
King's unmasked face has been the talk of the town, making the front page of every magazine, and also being named People's Sexiest Man Alive for 2021. More on King after this ad break. The holidays are upon us and it's a season of giving. So this Christmas, why don't you give your loved ones the gift of immortalized memories? We know you're busy, you have alliances to manage, greenhorns to fight, but don't let that stop you from showing those you hold dear that you cherish your time together. Providing quality and service, trust us to show that you care this Christmas and immortalize your special memories. The reveal of King's flashback certainly does help us contextualize his dark and mysterious character. It confirms a popular speculation that King himself was subject to torture, resulting in his reputation as a torture lover who may or may not have inflicted the same horrible experience to others, projecting his own frustrations. There are also some nice parallels that can be drawn from this backstory, such as the fact that both Zoro and King were freed from world government captivity by their future captains and both harbour extreme loyalty to said captains in their endeavours to become the next Pirate King. In fact, this gives us another piece of Kaido's own long-awaited backstory, which provides a fresh perspective on this arc's major antagonist. As always, reveals raises more questions, although what we have gotten so far seems to match a lot of what a certain YouTuber has been speculating, that Kaido is not the evil villain we have supposed him to be, and rather a mis- misguided character who once believed that he was the chosen joy boy to save the world from the clutches of the world government. To think that the suicidal alcoholic before us was once this bright smiled character really raises more intrigue into uncovering Kaido's story further. We've received glimpses of his backstory through Odin, Yamato and now King, but we are still waiting to see it from his own perspective for the full story. In the meantime, we have contacted Joy Girl to share more more of her speculations. Somebody help! Somebody please help! I really don't know what's going on anymore! King just took out a few of my friends! I thought King was on our side! Why is he attacking us too? What am I supposed to do? Somebody please help! All of my buddies! He set them on fire! There's flames, then dragons! Dragon flames! That, that one-eyed guy, I think he's clipped King now so maybe things will die down but I don't know, I'm still so scared. Somebody please help, someone has got to help me. Apologies for that disruption. We experienced some technical difficulties and went to the wrong camera feed. However, the fight between Zoro and King did certainly heat up this chapter. As aesthetically pleasing as King was in this chapter, we really have to give all props to Zoro. Being able to figure out the workings of the Lunarian physiology in such a short amount of time mid-battle, dealing with King's trick sword, and all the while fighting at an unprecedented level of maximum haki, this is nothing short of phenomenal. And this was also phenomenal on Oda's part, Part, with the mangaka not only giving us perhaps the best post time skip Zoro fight, but also throwing in some nice subtle parallels. The one eyed swordsman got to fulfill the legacy of Yuma, taking down King's dragon based attack, whilst his attack, the Purgatory Onigiri, looking awfully similar to the stance Ushimaru ended up in when he escaped the cave. And with speculations running high about Zoro's Shimotsuki lineage, and a certain theory about Zoro being specifically trained to adopt Ushimaru's style, these parallels are just too crafty to ignore. Oda also threw in some puns and parallels with King's attacks, because not only does it seem like King chose to mold his flame attack into a dragon, seemingly in honour of his saviour, but also Japanese speaker Sekaichi reveals that King's attack names in Japanese are food-based puns. King's attack Imperial Fire Dragon is Karyu Udon in Japanese being a pun on the dish curry udon and the bigger form, the imperial guardian fire dragon, is umori kari udon 
where umori means a big-sized meal. And it is certainly an interesting detail that Oda has incorporated into King's Arsenal, given that food-based attack named Pans is a theme set for Zoro's attacks. And with the chapter title The Zoro vs King, given the trend with one-on-one -on -one fights and chapter titles, it does seem like we may be seeing Zoro's victory over King confirmed in the first chapter of the new year. This does mean that Joy News was incorrect in the speculation that we will be seeing the future Pirate King's wings fight and win their respective battles simultaneously. However, we did get a somewhat similarly symbolic detail in this chapter, with Sanji's victory over a defeated queen with his left arm ripped off at the beginning of the chapter and Zoro slicing off King's right wing at the end. In other news, the winners of the Joy Fleet artwork competition are in, where the theme was to draw One Piece swords personified. Our winners are Irvin, who has drawn his rendition of Enma, and I'm sure Lord Enma herself would be extremely pleased to see her portrait. We also have Jiatsuki, who drew Soul Solid, and what an icy queen. Soul Solid has a solid form, as well as a bare bone form like like her owner. Thank you to our winners for providing us with such awesome artwork and thank you to everyone at home who has supported Joy News this year. We look forward to bringing you more independent and reliable journalism in 2022, but don't go yet because we need a proper celebration for the end of this year and a proper celebration for our chapter MVP Zoro. You may have heard Heat on Feet, but have you heard this? No, that's not it. No. Got it. Zoro, you're a wandering star, always lost but never far. Please put Emma back in your sash Cause Zorro, we don't want you dead So please rest up your hockey instead One more time! Zorro, you're a wandering star Always lost but never far Everywhere your swords will slash But please put Emma back in your sash Cause Zorro, we don't want you dead So please rest up your hockey instead